Good morning, Frank Watkin. It's 21st of Feb, doing a, a very quick morning report. Uh, unfortunately, I've lost my two co-hosts. Um, so I just want to talk about something that's a bit topical right at the moment, and that is gaps. For a start, just looking at LRK here, uh, we gap down rather significantly on the 16th of Feb, and this was all done because someone wanted to go and smoke some bongo juice or something years ago, and the news came out that the CEO was uh, on the syrup or whatever you guys call it these days. So uh, the price was dumped. Now, first issue is the price was on the way down anyway. Uh, but just looking at the gap, the low of the gap day was $4.46 and the high the next day was $4.10. So a fair sort of gap there. Okay, what would you do on gap day if you were in the stock? Firstly, let's just pretend that you had a stop underneath uh, this low here. Let's pretend you're in the stock for some reason. That, that's you know, lower highs, lower lows all the way. But if you're in there, um, your stop would have been hit at some stage. Uh, so there's an example of why you do not move your stop down. But assuming that you're not in there, I know people were trying to buy this and uh, other people were saying, well, you know, that's the same as trying to catch the falling knife. My attitude is, firstly, this hasn't come up on a scan with a buy signal, so I wouldn't even be looking at it, other than the fact that it's all over the um, social media. So I'd grab my box tool and I'd take it uh, to the top of the gap down day and I'd draw a box around that data. Now it's just a case of sit back, relax, and wait and see what happens. One way or another, if that stock breaks above about the $4.10 level, you might then buy it, looking for it to close the gap up there at um, 4.45 or whatever it was. But no, no need whatsoever to jump into that. The next one happened today, um, next one I'll look at, AGL. Now, this is totally different. We've been in this stock. It's shown every signs of going up. And on Saturday morning, uh, someone made a takeover offer, I believe at about $7.50. And on the weekend, on Sunday, I think the board got together and refused that offer on the basis that there was not enough premium. So we have this gap up. Uh, today's low is 7.55 and Friday's high 7.29. So where to now? The first thing from my point of view is in a strong trending stock, a gap up is a sign of strength. Now, given the current market, we have been very quick to take profits on bullish announcements, i.e. if something gaps up, uh, we just take it pretty much on the open. Uh, however, I think AGL is a little bit different because the news wasn't you know, a bit of a gold strike or a gas down the bottom of a hole or something. Uh, it was a potential takeover. I think now, with AGL, there may be other people thinking, hang on, AGL is cheap and it might become uh, an ugly takeover where there's more than one bidder comes in, the board keeps knocking it back, uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, tempted to hold AGL, but 
uh, right now. Uh, I was going to say I'd, I'd probably have a stop underneath the low of today's tick, but it's right on that low now. So, uh, sorry, we're not. I've got the wrong data in there. We're at 796 now. Today's low, 755. So, yes, I'd probably put a stop in at the moment at around 749. If it's going to go all the way back and close that gap, it's probably going to go down further. Uh, bear in mind that today's move is done with um, US holiday tonight, not expecting a lot tomorrow. Um, so we might see a bit more action coming in on Wednesday. There is um, another gap that I want to look at, and that AKN. Now, I mentioned this one on Friday night, and uh, again, some pretty good news with a copper strike or something. And Friday's close was 18 and a half. Today's open 26. Now, very similar to the last stock. The, this um, stock is on the way up. I mentioned it because of the saucer here, the consolidation, so on and so forth. So ideally, a buy on this would have been, say, 20 and a half, 21 cents, but opened at 26. Low so far, 24. So it hasn't given uh, a chance for you to enter, depending on how your broker handles things. Theoretically, if you had a, a start on there at 20 and a half, you'd have been filled on the open at 26. How your internet broker handles it, I have no idea. How we handle it is simply to ring the client and ask if they want to chase it or not. Uh, our preference is not to chase. Uh, so, uh, again, if you were in this stock, uh, we'd have been on that news, on a, on a copper strike, we would have sold very close to the open, so around the 26 cent level, 26, 27. Uh, although it did get to that 31 moments after the open. But let's just assume the opening price. Now, again, to my mind, it is just a case of maybe um, putting a box around that sort of data there. Uh, at the moment, a lot of this wick is FOMO. So uh, if you were in there, I would think you'd be out by now. If you want to hang on, that's fine. Uh, placing your stop now is going to be difficult because of the gap. Um, if you're not in there, I certainly wouldn't chase. Just sit back, relax, wait for some consolidation and see what happens. Um, that's, that's my view on a couple of the recent gaps that we've seen, rightly or wrongly. Um, that's the way that I would treat gaps on most occasions. I'll leave it at that. Touchwood, talk to you in the next day or two or three.